Hi, I'm Mark from Greenham Heating, and today I'm going to be taking you through the process of installing the air source heat pump on this 1980s property in Sunderland. The property itself is a four bed detached property, it's got all double glazed windows and PVC doors, and it's also got 300mm of loft insulation in the roof. We completed the heat loss survey on this property about six weeks ago, and the total heat loss of the property was 4.7 kilowatts. So we're going to be installing the Valent Aratherm 5 kilowatt unit. The customer had already oversized most of the radiators in the property, so we found out that we'll get to a 45 degree design temperature just by changing two more radiators. But I'll take you inside the property and we'll explain exactly what the current system is and what we're going to be doing. This is the current boiler on the system. It's a Worcester Bosch heat only boiler. And it actually, it's going to work in a very similar way to what the heat pump's going to work. So you've only got two pipes which go upstairs to the cylinder cupboard, which I'll show you next. We're upstairs in the property now, inside one of the bedrooms, and this is where the cylinder cupboard's located. So I'll explain to you exactly what's going on here and what we're going to be doing. What we've got here is a pretty standard setup for a vented cylinder. So we've got our cylinder there, and in the loft we've got our header tanks. So we've got one header tank for the cold water which goes to the cylinder and another header tank for the central heating. So from here, from the boiler downstairs, the flow comes up. So the hot water goes up to the three port valve and then from the three port valve, it's either diverted to your hot water cylinder or down to your radiators. So the main differences inside the cylinder cupboard is we're going to be removing the vented cylinder for a valent unvented cylinder. We're going to be changing the three port valve for the domestic hot water priority valve. We won't need this um, shower pump anymore, which actually it feeds the whole house, not just the shower. So that's been pressurizing every outlet. And we're going to be tidying up the rest of the pipework and insulating it all properly. The flow and return pipework from the current boiler goes down at the moment and through the floor across to the kitchen where the boiler is. But we're going to be taking it upstairs into the loft space, across to the side of the house, and then down the side of the house to the new heat pump location. I mentioned removing the three port valve for the domestic hot water priority valve. This is because on a heat pump, we don't use the heating and hot water at the same time. What's going to happen is when we've got demand for hot water, the valve will totally switch over to the hot water side and that'll allow the heat pump to ramp up to a higher temperature to satisfy the cylinder. Then when it's satisfied, it'll click back over to central heating mode and it'll run at a much lower temperature in this mode and that makes it a lot more efficient. We're outside now and the heat pump's going to be located just on the side of the house, just in front of the shed. The primary pipe work's going to run up the side of the house, up into the loft space, where we're going to take it across and then down into the cylinder cupboard. One thing that we need to do with the heat pump is create a nice solid base for the heat pump to sit on top of. So we're going to be digging out the ground round here and creating two concrete pads for the heat pump to stand on top of. We're also going to be digging a soak away just to make sure that it's got somewhere suitable for all of the condensation to run off to. We've just completed one of the worst parts of the job and that's digging the footings for the heat pump but at least that's all in place now and the heat pump's got a nice solid base to sit onto. So our next job is going to be to send the primary pipe work up the side of the building. Cameron's already drilled two holes up there and take it across to the cylinder cupboard where Mark's busy installing the cylinder. We're just coming to the end of day one now and just in time as well because it's starting to rain but we've made some really good progress today so we've managed to get the foundations in for the heat pump we've got the primary pipe work up the side of the building and across to the cylinder cupboard and mark's got a lot of the pipe work done inside the cylinder cupboard ready to connect it to the cylinder we have hit a little bit of a snag though because the cylinder that we've got has got a little bit of damage on one of the tappings so we've ordered a new one up that we're picking up tomorrow morning and hopefully we'll have some more luck with that one So it's day number two on this install and as you can see it hasn't stopped raining since yesterday so we've invested in a new piece of kit to keep it nice and dry while I'm doing the rest of the job outside. We've got a lot of work to do today so I'm going to start off outside, I'm going to dig the soak away and get that back filled so we can get the heat pump in place. Mark's upstairs, he's changing the cylinder over because the new one's arrived and we're going to get the electrical wire fed across ready for the electricians coming this afternoon just so they've got a nice easy job once they arrive. Hopefully if everything goes well we might be able to get the system power flush today and we might even be in a position to turn the heat pump on by the end of the day but we've still got a lot to do so it might be tomorrow morning before we get that done.
So that's the soakaway in place now. And with the soakaway, what we normally do is dig about 600 mil below the ground, depending on what the level of ground frost is in the area. And we put a four inch soil pipe down directly below where the drain off is from the heat pump. And we'll fill it with 20 mil gravel and then a couple of bags of 10 mil gravel on top of that as well. Now all we need to do is cut the soil pipe to the right height that we need and we can get the heat pump in place. That's the heat pump in position, so we've checked everything and everything's nice and level. As you can see, it's another Valent unit that we've installed on this job. So Valent's pretty much the only manufacturer we actually use for heat pumps. Um, ever since we've been installing heat pumps, we've found them absolutely brilliant. The aftercare service has been amazing on them and they come with a nice warranty as well. So this one's actually got a seven year warranty. Something that you do have to consider when you're using the Valent units is the type of refrigerant that they use. So these use the R290 refrigerant and that means that you've got to have certain clearances around the unit. So you just need to make sure that you're a certain distance away from windows and doors and other openings to the building. So we're going to be coming straight off the back of the heat pump with this flexible pipe. So this end connects to the heat pump and then this end connects to inch copper pipe. From this we're going to also add a inch antifreeze valve as well. From this the pipe's going to run to the wall, across and then up to the pipework that we've already got coming from the loft. We are going to remove this insulation from the pipework though and replace it with Primary Pro and that's just because we think it gives a much better finish. That's all the pipework connected at the back of the unit. Everything's finished in the cylinder cupboard and Mark's now removed the old boiler. So it's time to start power flushing. So we like to power flush every one of our heat pump installations and it just makes sure that the whole system's nice and clean and there's no dirt or debris inside the system that can block up the plate heat exchanger. I mentioned earlier that this system's been designed around a 45 degree floor temperature and that doesn't mean that the floor temperature is going to constantly be 45 degrees through the radiators. So when we do the heat loss survey, we'll have to find out what the design temperature is for the area that the house is located in. For this house, the design temperature is minus 4.3 degrees. So when it's minus 4.3 degrees outside, the floor temperature going through the radiators will be 45 degrees and we've sized the radiators based off that. So whenever the external temperature is above minus 4.3 degrees, the temperature in the radiator won't be 45, it will be something less. So today it's around about 7 degrees outside and the floor temperature is going to be around about 35 degrees in the radiators. The way that the system does this is by using the outdoor sensor that we've just installed. So that picks up the external temperature and sends it back to the heat pump controls and that then modulates the internal floor temperature and that's called weather compensation which is by far the most efficient way to run a heat pump. We've just come to the end of what's been a very wet and rainy day too, but we've still managed to get a lot of work done. So the heat pump's in place, we've managed to do all the pipework behind it, everything's connected across to the cylinder cupboard, we've power flushed the system, we've got the electrics in place, and the old boiler's been removed. So tomorrow we're going to get the electrics done to the heat pump interface, we're going to pressurise the system and just check it again for any leaks, and then we can get the system up and running. We've also got quite a bit of work to do on lagging all the pipework upstairs in the cylinder cupboard and finishing off the external insulation, but hopefully we'll get everything done tomorrow. Today's number three on the installation and it's a much better day today. It's not raining, so hopefully we're not going to get wet. And I don't know if you can tell, but the heat pump is already up and running. So Mark finished the electrics in the cylinder cupboard this morning, so that's currently in hot water mode, trying to satisfy the cylinder. And if you want to have a listen, it's a really quiet unit, this one. And that's the reason that we use Valence, because they're really good quality, well-built units, and they're extremely quiet when they're running. So we've still got quite a bit to do. We've got to finish all the insulation work in the cylinder cupboard. We've got some bits of insulation to finish behind the heat pump. And then once it's finished the top water mode, we can balance the system and make sure where all the radiators are getting hot enough.
I'm just behind the unit now and I'm just finishing off the external insulation. So wherever possible, we always like to use Primary Pro insulation. We've found that it gives by far the best finish out of all the other products that we've tried. It's nice and watertight and you can cut the joints and miter them perfectly. So a little bit of bond agent in there and you've got a nice clean watertight joint. One thing that we are going to have to do is get an L bracket made out of some uni strut and that's just to take the weight of these two pipes coming out the back of the heat pump. Because we've got flexible connections coming from the heat pump itself, I'm just worried that over time it might sag under its own weight and it might put a bit too much stress on the two joints in the corner. So the customer's just pointed out to us that we've actually done something wrong on this installation and it's, it's not on the heat pump side, it's on the electrical side. So the customer used to be involved in sort of high level electrical projects and he's pointed out to us that where we've got the isolator is outside of electrical regulations. So with heat pumps, especially the ones with the R290 refrigerant, we try and keep the electrical isolator a certain distance away from the heat pump, just so in case there's ever a leak of propane out of the unit, it can't cause a spark and cause an explosion. So we have actually installed the electrical isolator right in the corner over there. Um, it's probably about two meters away from the unit. But I've been told that it's supposed to be within 1.2 meters to actually isolate the unit in case of failure. So we're going to change it and we're going to just install one on the wall here. So for the R290, it just needs to be above the height of the unit. It doesn't have to be a certain distance away. It does if it's underneath the height of the unit, but above the unit, you can put it pretty much anywhere. So the reason I kept it in the corner was just so it looks a bit better on the side of the house. But obviously I've done something wrong, so we're going to get that changed. So thank you Graham for telling us that and every day is a school day. So that's everything outside finished now and the heat pumps are working away nicely in hot water mode. A heat pump works in a very similar way to a heat only gas boiler where there's only two pipes that actually come from the unit. So we've got a flow and return pipe which comes out the back of the unit that runs across, up the wall, into the loft space and across to the cylinder cupboard. But I'll take you upstairs now and explain exactly what's going on there. We're up in the cylinder cupboard and Mark's done another fantastic job on this installation. So all the pipe works nice and neat and it's all been insulated to minimise heat loss. So the main thing in the cupboard is the cylinder itself. So this is a 200 litre unvented cylinder. So the customer is going to be getting much better pressure from this than they were from the vented cylinder that they previously had. In terms of pipe work, we've got the floor pipe that comes from the heat pump, which goes up the external wall and across the loft. That then comes down, which is this pipe here, and goes to our domestic hot water priority valve. And that either sends the hot water to the cylinder to charge your hot water, or down and into the radiators. On the return pipe work from the radiators in the cylinder, we've also got a heat pump filter there, and a Y strainer. And that's just to make sure that no dirt or debris can make its way back to the heat pump and block up the plate heat exchanger. We've also got some of the controls for the heat pump in the cylinder cupboard. So in here we've got the heat pump interface, we've got the internet gateway, and also the wireless receiver for the sensor net controls. That's the installation complete and the heat pumps working away nicely in hot water mode. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you've got any more questions about heat pumps or the installation process, please feel free to send us a message, drop us an email or give us a call on 0191 548 7171.